the entrance antiphon, God sent his son, born of a woman, so that we might receive adoption as children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, were, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. We are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on guard against idols. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea where he spent some time with them baptizing. John was also baptizing in Ainan at near Salim because there was an abundance of water there and people came to be baptized for John had not yet been imprisoned. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and everyone is coming to him. John answered and said, no one can receive anything 
except what he has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said that I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The best man who stands and listens for him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase. I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. Forming a child's imagination, their vision of what is possible is very important. So for example, when the boys and girls of our school and parish come into church, sometimes I will remind them, one day you could walk down this aisle as a bride. One day you could meet your wife at this altar. So they can begin imagining entering the holy sacrament of matrimony right here. Because if they never imagine it, if they never think it possible, they will never choose it. <laughs> so we have to form our imaginations so we can envision what is possible. Take, for example, a mother and father and one of their daughters in the kitchen. The mother is talking to her daughter, perhaps 13 years old, about dating. And dad comes up behind mom and he puts his arms around her and around her head with his head looks down at his daughter and says, I hope, I desire that one day you find a man who will love you just as much as I love your mother. <laughs> and then she says, I think you can do better. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm joking. But, but the dad, and then he gives her a kiss on the cheek. But the point is, is that she begins to see how a husband takes delight in his wife. Now, oftentimes, marriage is founded on Christ-like love, where we love each other, even if we don't have the feeling of delight. Because there are times where love is definitely more than a feeling. Um, so, do you imagine, do you envision that God delights in you? that God wants to have a deep communion with you and your family as a husband and wife have in each other. John the Baptist saw himself as the best man, the one who witnesses and testifies to the communion of Jesus the bridegroom and we the church, humanity, the bride. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride and a bride in her bridegroom, Christ rejoices to be in union with you and me. That's why the sacrament of marriage is so important. Not only the reason, but a main reason, because it points us to what kind of love God has for us as humanity, a faithful love, a total love, a fruitful love, a love freely given. But we can walk away from that love, and that's what the first reading speaks of from the first letter of John, is there are sins that are deadly that kill the life of God from within us that destroy, that rupture in a, in a decisive way, our relationship with God. We call that mortal sin. Mortal sin is where the church teaches that we do something that is gravely wrong. We know it is wrong, and we freely do it anyway. 
just think in a marriage where I know this is wrong towards my spouse and it is wrong and I freely choose it anyway. Well, that would rupture the relationship, wouldn't it? Sometimes in a consequential way that goes on into, into the future. But as we know in marriage, so with God, is that God brings forgiveness and can bring us back together through the sacrament of reconciliation. And so that death of the soul is not permanent when we humble ourselves and come back to him in, in sorrow and receive his forgiveness. And then the evil one cannot touch you. <laughs> if you've been compromised, either in your marriage or in your relationship with God, come back to him. He delights in you. Have that in your heart. He delights to save you. He delights to forgive you. He delights for you to be his. Now stand for our prayers of petition. As we continue the Christmas season, we turn our hearts to the Lord and present our needs to him. For all members of the church, may we continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public authorities, may God grant them the humility to be guided by his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone during this season of joy, May the love of the newborn king bring them hope and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community who feel anxious or afraid, may the calming presence of the Lord bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that God will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all the faithful departed, George Hazel, Jenny McCready, and Father Dale Reef, and for the intentions of this Mass, Jerry Kitt and the living and deceased members of the Kitt family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we offer our parish vocations prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious, as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and all fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. We may, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May you receive him of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me judgment, condemnation. Mercy be for me, protection, mind, and body, and unanimity. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever-deepened trust for the things eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have some good news. The, the confession um, partitions have come in from the furniture maker for both these confessional rooms and also the one in the chapel. But um, I was just wondering if I could get maybe four, four to six men or women to help move. There, it takes at least two people per one, and we have three different rooms. And so if we look at this room back here together, then the other four people can go to the other rooms and, and situate it. That'd be really helpful. Um, so after the prayers after Mass, if, if you know two to four to six people could just meet me back there to help me move um, uh, the confessionals. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.